Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. What's going on, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam. Welcome back to the Print Life. Before I start today's video, it's the ISS Long Beach week or weekend, whatever you want to call it, and I am unfortunately not going to be there. I apologize to everyone who went, and I wanted to do a meet and greet this year, but I kind of had this like goal in mind where I was only going to go if I had a product to show and to share with people, and unfortunately, time didn't get there. So. I will be at the 2020 ISS Long Beach show with a product in hand, in which time I will be able to say what's up to everybody and we'll have a, a jolly good time hanging out and just, you know, doing things. One more thing, I apologize for that mind-busting squeal that you'll hear towards the last part of the video. The audio on this whole thing is just a total shit show. I have been uh, kind of, I, I, I've, Grown a bit of an obsession with like 80s and 90s era screen printed vintage t-shirts. And I think one of the reasons is, is because in that era, they were using bigger half tones, you know, like a 45 line per inch, something where you could still see the dot. And I was sitting there taking a look at a Harley Davidson graphics in particular, one of those 3D emblem graphics that they used to do back in the day. <sighs> I'm not used to vlogging, I'm out of breath. And there was some kind of tactile coolness about being able to see the halftone dots. And the reason I bring this up is um, I made some adjustments to AccuRip. Shoe came undone. In this particular job, hang on, I'm tying my shoe while I say this. In this job, we're gonna be using a 45 line per inch halftone instead of the usual like 55. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with my white. That's a, that does not happen, not very often. That whole thing out there, I'm gonna have to do a voiceover because this lav mic kept cutting out on me. It's this thing, man. I got this new lens, it looks beautiful, but it makes this clunking noise. So to battle that, I had to set up a lav mic, which is basically a receiver mounted on top of the camera, and then I have the actual lav in my pocket. You have to make sure you've turned both of the powers on and you have to make sure the batteries don't die. Well, the battery on this receiver was dead and uh, it just fucking very often. In case you're wondering what I'm complaining about, the film just stuck to the bottom of the screen and that's a new thing since we changed the vacuum blanket so I'm a little bit frustrated. But I'm gonna continue to set up and this is the halftone screen, it's 45 line per inch. I'm taping it down. This is a 280 and uh, you know, I'm gonna start burning it because that's what you have to do. You have to burn it, you have to hit it with UV light and blah, 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 blah. I think I'm bitching about the fact that I just had to go answer a phone call and because of that, the screen was soaking in the tank too long. So I'm like, oh, this is probably gonna break down, but I'm gonna expose it anyway. So I start exposing it. We should probably cut this, but I'm just gonna let it play through. Let's let you guys see uh, another of my many failures. And wash, wash, wash. He's washing, he's washing. But yeah, so, so some of the fine lines in this thing started breaking down because it was soaking in the dip tank for too long. And cutsies. Washing out the rest of the screens that I burned in the halftone. This is just a one big long time lapse uh, montage. So I'm probably gonna cut this at some point because I don't want to sit here and talk. And then see, I just put that foam pad in there because the last film stuck and I don't know why, so I'm a little bit frustrated. I think though, it's a little humid here right now, and normally we don't have to deal with humidity, so we don't have a dehumidifier in the dark room. I think that, yeah, burpee, burpee, that first screen just had too much moisture in it. It wasn't fully dry. And I, although, yeah, I think I'm complaining here about how, not complaining, but I'm like, you know what I'm probably gonna need to do because the thing felt stuck to the bottom of the screen. I probably need to get a dehumidifier and put it in that room and then everything will be okay. I'm talking about something like that. And now I'm burning a client's film. Did I just say burning? I meant to say printing a client's film. Well, actually right now I'm setting it up and uh, you can see me just looking like a real piece of shit. 
get him out of there. And this is one of those, you know, cool close-ups of the film printing. And then I aggressively grab the film because I think that looks cool. And I set it on top of the shirts uh, because we're waiting on some more shirts. And this was a really, that was a really washed out picture of my bike. You can see my ADD kicking in there. I just decided to leave that in. And now I'm talking about this thing called Rapid Reg, which I saw on Instagram. And they basically use the same principle that we do where we tape the films to the palettes, but they've made a really cool template. Uh, and I don't know if it's going to work, but I went ahead and ordered it right here. And I'm talking now about how this could be really cool because we've already been doing this and this is just a better version. And now we can wipe it down and we don't have to print it out on the film. So, and I'm also saying how like, it's really cool because it's just a screen printing shop and they decided to offer this. So I'm going to go ahead and buy it to support them because that's the kind of guy that I am and that you guys should be like that too. Instead of making your own, buy it from someone who's put in the effort. And now I'm grabbing screens. Dum, da, dum, da, dum, dum. Dome. And uh, then now I'm doing what I would norm what I can't wait to do with the rapid register. I'm taping the film down so that we can register our jobs to the film. So tapey, 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 tapey. I think I only taped the top and the bottom on this one, but normally we would tape all four corners. And now I'm putting white pieces of tape, or I'm sorry, pe white pieces of paper under the film because it's easier to see the registration marks when there's a white backing and it just makes setup easier another reason why i think that rapid reg template is so good is because it's dark dense black print on a white background so it'll be really easy to see the registration marks when you're setting up and notice how that white moved and now just magically movie magic it's fixed so now i'm putting all the screens into the carousel and i think while I'm doing this, I'm setting it up, and then only after that do I realize that I skipped a step because I'm out of practice, and I didn't zero out the print heads like you're supposed to, like like I tell everyone to do. So what I tell you here is do as I say, not as I do, because if you do as I do, you're going to fail miserably. But yeah, I'm, I'm loading them all up in here, and... Um, um, and I'm probably complaining about it a little bit, and then this this is like, oh, I need a better angle for shooting this, so I changed the camera right there, right? Now this one is edited differently because I'm not going through and doing a lot of uh, cuts. I'm just kind of letting this play through and commentating. Uh, the cool thing about this Anatol press though is something that I just absolutely love is that it has locking knobs for both the tilt and the height adjustment off the, uh, on the off contacts. And they're also toolless. Uh, the old M&R Sidewinder, I had issues with it because the goddamn thing, uh, they could, you couldn't lock them down. Now here I'm talking about how I like to pre-reg stuff. Uh, but what I will do when I'm setting up a job, even if whether it's a two, three, four, five, or six color, uh, even if it was an eight color, I will go through and I quickly register them. So I don't spend a lot of time on it. I get it as close as I can in like 30 seconds, you know, bounce it forth, back and forth. Uh, and then I just lock it down and I move on to the next one. Um, but the thing is, is you don't want to harp on one screen for too long because you find that you end up going backwards. Instead of getting closer a lot of the times, you'll get further away if you spend too much time on it. So my advice in this video, 30 seconds in, on to the next one. 30 seconds, on to the next one. And then once you've done them all and they're all in a pretty close spot, some of them you may even have gotten within that 30 seconds, then you go back and do the micro adjustments on any of them that you weren't quite able to get that first time around. It prevents you from um, getting too focused on one of them. Oh, geez, I just stepped on my little puppy's tail. I'm sorry, bubs. You okay? Uh, what am I doing here? Uh... So now I'm I'm telling what I just said. Now I'm getting back around to it. So I'm I just did my first round of 30 seconds each. So now I'm going back to all the screens. And I'm just gonna hit them up real quick, and and dial them in. That's what I'm doing here. Let's go ahead and just time lapse that. And I'm pretty confident that everything is now dialed in because I went through all that. So I uh, this is one of about seven screens, dude. Hey man, phone's ringing. I'm trying, I'm working here, mother. What was I saying? Yeah, so this is one of the few screens that I have to uh, actually tape because we did not liquid tape it. We just got them in the other day. We needed to use them right away. Uh, so we just haven't done the liquid tape thing. And also we've been using it for so long. I just wanted to experiment because Jesse's been having a real hard time keeping these screens clean. So I wanted to see if it was easier for him to clean them when there's not liquid tape on the edge, which of course it's easier to clean them when there's not liquid tape on the edge, but we're trying, I'm trying to decide if it's worth it. Cause let's be honest, taping screens over the course of a week, it kills a lot of time, especially when you 
screw it up like that. Again, out of practice. And, ooh, magic. Tape. Uh, disappeared and reappeared. Look how long it takes me to tape that, dude. I'm so out of practice. What I'm doing here is putting clear tape over the registration marks. And the reason I do this is once you fill the registration marks with ink after your first tester, it's harder to clear it out of there. If you put clear over the top of it, if you have to make an adjustment, it's very easy to wipe away the ink from those registration marks, get your adjustments, and do another print, and if you have to adjust it again, it's really easy to wipe them away. If you don't put tape on the top of the registration marks, set up, or registration is more of a pain in the ass. Now, I'll usually remove that tape after we start production, but it's there all the way until I do my first test sample. My first sample, my first tester. I make my adjustment. It's basically there until we're ready for production. Better way of putting it. And this is a cool montage of inking the screens because you got to have montages in there. Otherwise, people don't want to watch your videos because if it's just one straight, boring, unedited shot, then you're not going to build a fan base. And isn't that what YouTube's all about? Because otherwise, why am I doing this if I'm not trying to build the fan base? I don't know. Maybe because I think it's fun. Uh, that's why when I don't think it's fun anymore, I stop doing it. And this is the actual Comet White from Green Galaxy. And now, Jesse and I, what are we doing here? Oh, <laughs> I forgot to label which film was the underbase and which one was the overprint. So Jesse and I are you know, just looking like a bunch of chimps trying to figure out what screen is the underbase. So we figured it out. And now I'm printing with this green galaxy. And again, when you're doing any, I didn't say, when you're printing with water-based ink, the trick is to fill that screen with, I mean, you're going to probably triple what you would normally use if you were putting plastisol in there. So you just load the screen up with Green Galaxy. Another thing that we found is that it's actually a better print once you've done about 15 shirts. Once the ink starts drying a little bit, that's when it gets super opaque. Uh, and you can work with it forever. And now I'm printing, and I just decided... Oh, man, I really want this to be more zoomed in and more of a close-up. So let me go ahead and adjust that real quick because it'll just be a lot cooler if it's a close-up. So I just did a close-up, and now I'm printing the black halftone. First one wasn't good enough. I have found, and maybe this is your guys' experience as well, when you first start, you have to do two pulls. Um, just to, well, You just have to do a double hit to get the screen mesh saturated with ink. And then after that, you can do it with one pull. But you got to saturate the ink. If you do too many pulls, though, then you get dot gain on the bottom of the mesh, and then it closes your half tone off. So that's not good either. But you have to usually do two pulls just on the first, and then after that, it's just one pull. Okay, and that's my yellow. And as a matter of fact, as I'm watching this, I already, I can, um, because I've already been through this, we end up having to add an extra color to this. We end up having to add gray to the rose because it's a black rose, but we just needed a little bit more gradation between the white uh, or the, the highlights on the black, and we needed a smoother gradation. So we, add a, we end up adding a gray screen to this, and it, it looks a million times better in, on the rose. Now I'm taping the bottom of the registration marks up, and uh, this is the first sample. Got to snap a photo with my cell phone and fire it off to my client. All right, that's on the way to him for approval. As long as he's good with it, then we'll move forward and uh, you know, keep this thing going. It's just loading and loading and loading. It will not send to him, so it's taking forever to get an approval. All right, so it's the next day, and uh, like I said earlier, we did end up having to add a gray to that graphic just to kind of tie everything together, bring out some of the dynamic range in the rows, lighten it up a little bit. Looks good now, let's check it out. I'm constantly trying to make this stuff look better because I don't like having a low quality, shitty looking videos, right? But nothing ever works right. The lav system that I have is either doing two things, the batteries are either dying or then out of a, all of a sudden out of the blue from nowhere it starts to take on this squealing sound. So now I've put this mic on top of the camera which is usually all good but I know it's going to pick up the auto focusing sound. It's a lose lose other than getting rid of this damn lens but the lens looks so good. 
<sighs> I don't know what to do. It does look good. I'm happy with it. The graphic is an interesting graphic. It was created to look very loose. However, I am by no means an expert when it comes to halftone printing. So Jesse and myself are figuring it out. I recently started using Accurate. I'm testing it out, feeling it out, like some things, don't like some things. My question to you is how you guys are using or utilizing Accurip for better or for worse. Let me know in the comments. Let's start a dialogue and maybe uh, in the future we can do a full dedicated video to the best separating software that you guys have found and are currently using. Anyways, thanks so much for hanging with me and Jesse at Monument Limited. It's been real. Oh, peace out.